Today we're going to make pasta bagiole. This is a really flavorful Italian soup made with the tomato broth and ditalini pasta and cannellini beans. I am going to show you my variation of Lydia Bastianich's recipe. So my grandmother bought me this cookbook as a wedding present because we used to watch Lydia on PBS every, I think it was Saturdays, you can see how warm it is. But I do make mine slightly different. If you want the link to the book, I'll leave that in the box below and let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is heat a pot of water. I'm gonna put in three liters of water and we're gonna let that come to a boil. We are gonna peel our potatoes. This is a unique recipe to me because growing up, it was just beans and pasta. You never put any potatoes in it. It really makes a full bodied soup. It adds a really nice texture. I have three pounds of potatoes right here because my family likes it almost like a stew. You could use two pounds, depending on the consistency that you prefer. I have three russet potatoes here and we're just gonna go ahead and peel them. Okay, so all of my potatoes are peeled. I want them to boil a little quicker, so I'm just gonna cut them in half. And add them to the water with some rosemary and hot pepper flakes and bring it to a boil. I'm going to make this really flavorful soup base called a trito. A trito is a mixture of aromatics and herbs that you dice up very finely. In this case, we're gonna use a mini processor. And then you make a sofrito out of that by gently frying it in oil and that becomes the base for your soup. So we're gonna start with three to four cloves of garlic. To take off the skin, I just let it get out all my aggression. I'm not that mad today though, so. Anyway, it helps to get the skins off. Put that in our mini processor. And then I have some parsley. And I'm gonna put about a quarter cup in there a quarter of a cup of shaved carrots in there. We were fortunate enough to have her restaurant in our area for a while and my grandparents celebrated their 65th wedding anniversary at her restaurant. Now I'm gonna just take the carrots and I'm gonna put those in my mini chopper as well. I'm gonna chop that up for a few seconds. And then what I'm gonna do is add some olive oil to make kind of like a paste. when you have enough, it'll start to come together. You might want to scrape it down once or twice. Mm, it smells so good. I wish you could smell it. Add a wee bit more olive oil. There we go. See that? It's, it smells amazing. And really, this is great for the base of so many soups and sauces that you're gonna make. You put it in a mason jar, put a little olive oil on top of it, and just keep it in your fridge for a few weeks, and you'll be ready to go anytime you're ready to cook. I moved our potatoes to the stove to boil. In the meantime, we're going to finish the base for our soup. And to do that, we're going to add a little olive oil to a pan. And we're going to chop up this onion and saute it. The recipe calls for a, a medium-sized onion. I bought this onion at Costco and everything's jagunda there. So I'm going to use half of this onion. It's about a cup. Okay, so I'm chopping up half of this onion. A nice fine dice. You can find this entire recipe on my website, thenighttimecook.com. And if you like my channel, please like, subscribe, and share. So we have our onion diced and ready to go. We're going to add that to our pan. And we're going to saute that for about 10 minutes. While we're waiting for... <coughs> the onions are getting me. What I like to do is cook my ditalini separately. Once it's done cooking, you can toss it with a little bit of olive oil and put it in a container in the fridge. And then anytime you want to have a bowl, you just take the amount that you want for each cup of soup or bowl of soup and you add it. That way it won't absorb all of your delicious soup broth. The other thing you can do is if your soup gets too thick the next day, you can always add some chicken stock or crushed tomato to thin it out a little bit. All right, my onions have been sauteing in a pan for about 10 minutes, and now we're going to add our trito mixture that we made before. And we're gonna just let that cook for another couple of minutes. It's a little bit rainy today and cold. It's not quite spring, so this is gonna be a great treat for my kids when they come home from school today. All right, so we have our trito in there. Making a gag. 
So we're letting that cook for another two minutes or so, just to blend well with our onions. In the meantime, <coughs> what is in my fucking throat? <coughs> Isn't that pretty? Jesus. Dying. The last and final thing we're gonna add to our soup base is some crushed tomatoes. I have a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. I'm just gonna add that to it. We're gonna let it cook for a few more minutes and I'll show you what we're gonna do next. I'm just gonna add this in. Stir, and we're gonna let that cook for another 10 minutes. Oh, it's splashing me. At this point, I like to add some salt and pepper. And we'll season now, we'll season later as well. I don't have a measurement for the salt and pepper. That's a personal choice. I can't tell you how to salt and pepper. Okay, our potatoes have been boiling for about a half an hour. You wanna make sure that they're completely tender all the way through. And our sauce, or our base, is finished cooking. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our potatoes and we're gonna put them in the sauce a few at a time. What I like to do is just use a potato masher, an old fashioned potato masher, and mash them up. And I'm gonna repeat this process until all of our potatoes are mashed. They're not all the way mashed, God help you. Yeah. This guy's not all the way. Make sure your potato is a little more tender than mine. Now I wanna go ahead, since we just have our broth here, and pick out any woody stem that we have from the rosemary. I already found a bay leaf. The other one's missing in action. <clears throat> now we're gonna add back into our pot our mashed potatoes, our onions, our trito, and our tomato mixture. Kind of carefully. Oh! <laughs> most of it back in the pot. <clears throat> These hot pepper flakes are killing me. I'm just gonna take some beans that I drained and rinsed. I have a can of cannellini beans, and I have a can of kidney beans. I'm gonna put that in. I'm gonna let this mixture cook for about 20 more minutes, and then we're done. At this point, you wanna add some more salt and season it a little bit more if you need to. Mine tastes pretty good, so. Okay, so our pasta fagiola is done. I went ahead and boiled the digelini, and I drizzled it with some olive oil, and we can store this in the refrigerator. And the way that I'm going to plate this is put a tablespoon or so. You can, you can add a little more, depending on how much you like. I'm gonna put that in the bowl, and then we're gonna get a nice scoop of our pasta visual. The last thing I like to do is take a lot of Romano cheese and put it on top. It just makes it extra delicious. There you have it, pasta visual.